Hello! Thank you for coming to this video today, guys. I really appreciate it. We're going to be going over a lot of cool stuff. We're going to be going over a uh, Ergo slash Emergo stable coin that's going to be in the Uroi wallet. Um, and, I mean, that's going to be some, that's really cool news. I, I almost started talking about it because I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, we're also going to be going over the user count for Uroi, how much it's been growing. Uh, we're also going to be going over um, IOG closing down their pools. We're going to be going over some hardware support on Daedalus, when you guys are going to be able to use hardware wallets for Daedalus. Um, we got a lot of cool stuff today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, but before we jump into anything, if you guys want to support my channel, the best thing that you can do is delegate through to Bloom 3 through 6. Uh, we've actually lowered the fees by 20% for the next month as a thank you um, to our delegates. Um, and also, I want to say real quick, if anyone is in Bloom, uh, the original Bloom pool, this one down here, um, I, please, please move to another pool by December 6. Um, and I, I don't even want to say by December 6. Please do it now, right? Because you will actually earn half of your your rewards in the current state. Um, instead of 5.5%, you'll be earning probably like, I would probably say like 2.6% off the top of my head. So it's very important that you move out of Bloom Pool. Um, and if you want to stay with Bloom, we have Bloom 3 through 6. And we have that 20% discount for you. And thank you for your support thus far. Also, if you're interested in server consultation, um, where I can walk you step by step into creating your own stake pool, or you'd like me to maintain the nodes for you, uh, then you can email me at Peyton at bloompool.io. And this video is also sponsored by Ada Lovelace, the beauty that is Ada Lovelace, the first computer scientist. But, oh, also... Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email with your questions about saturation uh, to that email. Uh, we also have a Discord server down below, so click that Discord server link and you can ask questions and get saturation notifications from that. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Goodbye. So this is really important. It's also pretty, um, I guess you could say it's pretty cool. You know, so IOG has announced a new delegation strategy. We're going to be going over a little bit more on that after this part. Um, but look what they're doing. They're closing down all 20 of their IOG pools. And what they're going to be doing is actually moving towards private pools. Um, and then also they're going to have one public pool. But just make sure that you guys um, get your stake out of IOG. Uh, you can come to Bloom. You can come to any other stake pool. Make sure you get your stake out of these IOG pools. They're going to be retired, so you're not going to be getting any more rewards. Um, but it's, yeah, look, it's it's pretty cool to see them all close down. Like they said, they were initially. They're leaving IOG one up. Uh, what's funny is that this, as we talked about earlier, you have the business side. Um, and then you have like different sides of IOG, right? Science side, business side. And there's also the nice side, right? And the nice side is Tim Harrison, Ben. Like they're just the nice guys to all stake pool operators, right? So it's funny to see that the business side told the nice side, hey man, we can't close the pools down until K the, till the K increase. We're gonna, we gotta make the money while we can, while the sun's still shining. I just thought that was funny, but I just wanted to give you guys this information that IOG is closing down all of their pools, but IOG won, so make sure you move your stake. So let's go over IOG's delegation strategy. So as we all know, they first opened up 20 pools um, and they're stating that they set this up partly due to our desire to monitor and test the network um, and technical dynamics of running a range of real pools. Also for operational and security reasons, we elected to stake the companies who own ADA holdings across these pools rather than with a private pool. And we also wanted some cash I mean, you can't just leave that out. I mean, those are probably very valid reasons, but the cash is definitely a reason. There's no, there's nothing wrong with that, IOG. Um, but as we all know, K is increasing to 500. It's normally set at 150. Um, so they would have to make, um, I, I want to say they have 20 now. I mean, if it scales, I mean, that's going to be probably 70 pools they would need. Um, so what they're actually going to be doing is they're, they're taking about 15% of our ADA holdings and delegating it to the Cardano community. So 15% of 3 billion. Uh, we shall use this ADA to support our long-term vision, support Cardano's growth, and reaffirm the values we espouse while maintaining financially responsible position required from us as a commercial organization. So they'll be doing 15%. And then what kind of pools are they going to be looking at? Uh, they're not going to be delegating to Bloom. They're looking for purpose pools. Um, and this is to delegate to pools that we feel support our wider purpose and mission of economic inclusion, uh, decentralization of sustainable technology, empowerment through education, and opening up an econo economic identity for all. So maybe Bloom, you know, we do a lot of education here. Um, but So then incubate, incubator pools. 
So we're going to focus on supporting smaller stake pools and their operators to maximize the diversity of our pool ecosystem, uh, notably in terms of ownership, geographic location, and decentralized block production. Such pools may or may not have the an ambition to grow or deliver additional value beyond the network role, but we want them to get them to get them to the stage where they can take it forward themselves. So some pools will small, fall in both these categories. Uh, these categories are not mutually ex exclu exclusive or uh, in initially, our criteria will be as flexible as we develop the program. But yeah, it's pretty cool. You actually do have to apply um, for delegation. Um, so yeah, so Ada Lovelace's birthday, the sponsor of this video, is actually the 10th. So you do have to apply for delegation. I'll include the link, the link to this article if you are a stake pool and you would like to, uh, if you have a mission or you're an incubator pool of any sort, then apply for this. I think it would be awesome for your pool. Um, getting a good amount of blocks to start off is very good for your history. So what do you guys think of this? Um, and they're doing three-month delegation, which is important to note. So yeah, that's IOG's delegation strategy. The pools are closing down. So this portion of the video, we're going to be talking a lot about Emergo uh, and also Ergo. Um, so first off, if you guys remember my video where I said, your Roy will be the next MetaMask. And when we looked at the MetaMask users last, I can pull it up real quick. Um, they were, it was crazy. I mean, millions of users, right? So yeah, so the last time I talked about this, MetaMask hits a million monthly users uh, thanks to the DeFi boom. And what MetaMask is, is it's essentially a wallet like your Roy that you can just pull up in this corner right here. Look, I can just click it. It's really nice. And, you know, they have a cute little uh, polygon looking wolf. I do like the, the branding there, but I believe that your Roy is going to be the MetaMask of Cardano and also of Ergo, right? Um, so they actually just really reached 50,000 users, uh, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. Um, I don't know if this is monthly or if this is total, um, but it's really cool to see uh, one of the best wallets uh, in Cardano, really the best wallet, uh, get 50,000 users. And this also shows I've been having some issues with it lately. It's been a little slow. Um, it's probably them just, you know, taking some time to deal with kind of the influx, you know, some growing pains. So following that, I actually wanted to talk about Ergo. Um, Ermergo is doing a lot with Ergo, uh, and we saw this with the ITN. So in the incentivized test net, what IOG did is they had another team, they made a incentivized test net to just test out the staking, the staking strategy to get people knowledgeable on what, what's going on uh, and also to kind of just collect data, right? And, and Mergo is doing the same thing with Ergo, right? So we don't have Gogan yet. We don't have the ability for them to make stable coins or anything. So uh, what Mergo is actually doing is trying this out on Ergo. And Ergo is similar. It's similar in the, in the way it's made, and it's the uh, UTXO model, right? So what they're doing is they're practicing this with your Roy um, on Ergo. Uh, just so we'll go over some of the stuff they're working on right now. So this is the the roadmap, and there is some cool stuff in here with Cardano. So uh, just stay tuned. So we have the first hard fork. Okay, this is where it gets juicy. The Ergo slash Emergo stable coin. And this is the protocol release and the CLI. But keep in mind, this is planned, right? And then the blue is the ongoing, so what they're working on. And then the the black is completed, right? And this is a little bit of out of date. So for example, the Oracle pools, the POC launch, this was already completed. We've done some, we've done some research on that. Uh, we actually have Oracle pools uh, talking to each other. Um, or Oracle pools pool is talking to Cardano and we're saving that metadata on the Cardano blockchain. We've, we've talked about that before. And so this is where it gets even more juicy. Ergo slash Emergo stablecoin integration in the Uroi wallet. So you'll have a stablecoin in the Uroi wallet on the Ergo blockchain, which is interesting. And like I said, um, even though this isn't for Cardano, they're learning how to do this and integrating it in the Uroi wallet for when the time comes to actually do it for Cardano. So private chain or cross chain swaps for core functionality. So that's really important. Um, but keep in mind, it is still planned. Um, then ledger integration. And then this is where this is the whole reason I did this integration in your Roy as a MetaMask style solution for Ergo. So I'm really excited for this. I'm really excited because I've actually um, no not financial advice, but I'm going to buy a little bit of Erg. I'm going to play around with it. I'm going to see what's going on in this ecosystem because every time I, I, I listen to it, um, I hear some good things and uh, the price right now seems decent after that last run. The last time I was interested in it, it was like a dollar something. So 
Um, I'm going to pick some up. I'm going to try it out. Uh, like I said, I'm actually going to be doing a live stream with one of the lead devs next week. So um, you're, you're going to be getting a lot more Ergo information coming soon. Uh, but I think this is pretty cool. I'll also be releasing some videos on kind of the integration. I'll show you guys what's going on in your Roy, what they're doing, what the stablecoin functionality is, how it's actually a stable coin. I'm going to be going over all this because it is really interesting to me. And um, I hope you guys are interested in it too. If you are interested in it, please type Ergo in the comment section below. I think this stuff's pretty cool. If you guys like it, we'll keep it up. So I'm actually going to re-record this because I, I was rambling too long. I just went for eight minutes. Um, and I know you guys aren't that interested. So the Cardano Foundation has changed their stance on stake pool advertisement. Um, and it's essentially TLDR. You cannot advertise your stake pool in your video and post it to Reddit, Telegram, or the Cardano forum. Um, they have three things you can do, however, right? So display names including pool names and tickers, that's okay, written references and video or blog descriptions, splash screen logos containing the state pool names or references. So I have a huge issue with this, right? Because the argument for, for removing, so I can't post any of my videos, right? I can't post this video. I can't post a one hour and 30 minute AMA on any of the forums. That's new rules from the Cardano Foundation. Um, and I think this is being unfairly pinned on YouTube staple operators and nobody else. This is targeted directly at us and they're not even trying to hide it, right? Because you're allowed to include it in blog descriptions or in the blog itself, but not in the video, right? So for example, if I had a Dollar Shave Club ad on this, that's fine. I can, I can advertise Dollar Shave Club um, on my video, but I can't advertise my stake pool. So that doesn't make any sense, first of all. So why limit stake pool operators that are making videos that provide value from advertising on their video and then sharing it on the forum, right? So there's a key difference between an advertisement and a video that provides value that contains an advertisement, right? So my issue was the rules how they've always been is if the video provides value and it's not an advertisement, then it stays. But the rules have just recently changed and they just changed the rules to follow the different interpretation of those rules. But let's let's give you guys an example of why I have an issue with this. And it's not because of the rule. It's because of the unfair treatment of the rule. Right. So if we go over to um, and I actually just found this on right, right here. OK. So Cardano's Gogan era progresses to its full imp implementation. Right. So let's go and click on this article. This is was one of the top upvoted posts on Reddit. We come here and look at the ads we get over and over and over again, articles for other ads. And then the first ad we get is a crypto jackpot. Double your crypto, 25 free jackpot spends, right? So this is a perfect example of why this is unfair. I, someone who who works for the community, who does all this stuff, works directly for Cardano, other than a little bit of ergo here and there because it relates to Cardano. So instead of um, allowing community members to advertise in their videos and post their videos on forums, you can't do that, but you can, however, post articles from, for example, Herald Sheets or Coin Market Cap that are not people in the community that provide no real value. They're often just say, Gogan's going to take over Ethereum, right? And then people are like, oh, Gogan's going to take over Ethereum. So they click and click and click. So those guys make a bunch of money. And while people that are actually in the community that are having a stake pool to support their channel, we cannot post our videos anymore. And then these people that are just in this for a cash drab, just doing this article for a cash drab, can put gambling ads that state double your crypto on them, right? I mean, I'm sure you guys see the issue with that. This rule is being unfairly treated on or unfairly positioned for Cardano content creators that are also stake pool operators. I make about ten to fifteen dollars depending on how good the video may or how good the video does. And, and the argument against this, the argument against stake pool operators being able to post their video with an advertisement is the fact that there are 1,300 stake pool operators. And if all of them posted advertisements all day, then the forums would be just terrible, just disgusting. And, and I, I just completely disagree with that because we have 1,300 stake pool operators right now. This rule wasn't in place before, right? And, and there's less than 25 actual content creators in Cardano that make valuable videos, right? Like I said earlier, there's a difference between an advertisement and a valuable video that contains an ad. And by limiting specifically stake pool operators, I mean, okay, like I said, 25, 25 different content creators. Well, now imagine if 1,300 operators were all making videos that provide valuable content for Cardano education, right? Not for the sole purpose of advertising. 
I think I think Cardano would be a better place. I think the ecosystem would be a better place. I mean, you have 1,300 videos coming out each week from these these operators that are providing value. I think that's going to push the marketing on Cardano in a good direction. But that's not the case. We have 25 operators. We saw what Cardano looked like if you allowed stake pool operators to advertise, and it was just fine. Reddit was awesome. I found many good stake pool operator content creators on Reddit, enjoyed their videos, and, and this is being unfair, unfairly enforced. But it is what it is. Um, I've been trying to say, hey, this doesn't make any sense. This isn't fair. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys the latest update. It is what it is. I'm not going to be able to post my videos on the forum, on Reddit, or Telegram anymore. Um, and it, it's not a big deal. It's less than 5% of my total viewers. Um, I just would like to kind of keep the people that have followed me on there. You know, I have actually have Reddit followers, which is weird, but just to kind of keep that community going, you know, so it's not a big deal for me, but it is at the same time, a big deal for new state pool operators who are just getting into the game and need to post their content on other forums to get their, give their videos a little push because that initial hump when you're starting out is impossible, right? So why can you have a, a, an article with a gambling ad, but I can't have a state pool ad, but I can have a, a dollar shave club ad. That does not make any sense. And I, I think what happened is these rules have gone too far because the rules were too loose and I don't think they're going to stick. I think we're going to fall somewhere in the middle. But I just want to keep you guys up to date on the latest Cardano Foundation news and that's it. So this is where I take a second and tell you guys that if you're in bloom, you need to switch your stake pool. Uh, we're currently at 112 million. We need to get down below 64 million. It's very important to give you guys some a better example on what happens you will actually get paid half your rewards if you keep staking with Bloom. And to incentivize you guys uh, to move, uh, we have lowered the fees in the four new pools. We've lowered them 20%. Uh, so we will be making 20% less on them and you guys will be earning some more rewards. Um, but you'll earn half your rewards if you stay in Bloom. It's also important to check your ID, your pool ID. So what you can do to check that is you go to bloompool.io forward slash ID. And this takes you to a page where you can verify IDs. Verifying an ID is similar to like verifying your address when you're withdrawing ADA from Binance, right? So we can scroll down here. Um, there it goes. Okay, so this ID right here is what you'll see in your ROI if you're using ADA pools. And this ID down here is the Daedalus ID. It starts with pool one, and you'll see this when you actually click on the new pool in Daedalus. It's very important you do this because you may lose rewards if you don't. Um, it's the same thing as verifying if you're withdrawing for Binance. Just how you'd verify ADDR1, you're going to verify pool 1, right? And then for your ROI, it'll be 8E. So just make sure whatever pool you're going to, you go to this website, you check it out. If you're switching from Bloom, make sure you check it out with your other operator to ensure that you don't lose rewards to these pesky people that are making uh, fake pools, you know. So if you guys have any questions about this, feel free to email me at Peyton at bloompool.io or also join the Discord server down below. Um, and just ask, you know, I, I try to help you guys out. If you have any questions, it's very important that you know what you're doing. I don't want you guys to lose any rewards. So we've got some Daedalus news before we log off for the day. So Daedalus 2.5, um, severely handy new features, uh, including the ability to save transactions to CSV files. Uh, this is important. People have been asking for this for a while for taxes. Uh, so I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. And then another thing, which is pretty cool, we actually have Treasure and Ledger on the next Daedalus flight candidate. It's already released, um, which is really cool. It's nice to see Ledger Nano S and Ledger Nano X being supported and also Tracer. And it'll be included in a future Daedalus mainnet release, currently ta targeting about the 3rd or 4th of December. Um, so that's awesome. I'm excited to see some hardware support with Daedalus. I'm excited to see all these new features coming out. I think in time, Daedalus is gonna be an awesome piece of software and I can't wait, right? But, um, it is important to note that this is only on the flight release, and like I said, it'll be on the 3rd or 4th, but when these come out on the 3rd or 4th, I will release videos on how you guys can use your ledger or your treasure uh, to stake with the Daedalus wallet, so that's pretty cool news, um, but yeah, that's the that's it. Um, this is the end of the video, so big shout out to Ada Lovelace for sponsoring this video. It means a lot. If you guys made it to the end of this video, type Ada Lovelace in the comment section down below. Uh, or type in Trezor or Ledger if you're more excited about that. But I appreciate it. If you guys have any feedback, uh, feel free to email me at Peyton at bloompool.io. Um, and that's it. I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Um, happy late, late Thanksgiving to you guys. I hope you all had a good day yesterday. Goodbye.